Welcome back to the British YouTube channel. Today's class, we are going to be learning how to make this beautiful kimono jacket. It's a very stylish jacket and has this color green all round, as you can see. So, if you come to this side, it has this beautiful drawstring that just adjusts the side for you and gives it any style that you want it to be. And then to the back, we have this open back that is beautified with beads just like we have it here and you can see the stylish color that we have at the back neckline as well it's a very simple tutorial and it's very easy to understand if this is something you would like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you okay so to make this kimono jacket i'm working with this beautiful ankara pattern and i've already folded it into four so that's two for the front and two for the back okay so now what i'm going to do is to i folded it on my yardage side okay so i just measured my my shoulder my shoulder is 16 divided by 2 is 8 and then i measured my desired sleeve length so i want the sleeve to be around 8 inches so i added 2 inches extra for allowance that's 10 so 10 plus 8 is 18 inches so you can see that I have 18 inches here and then the length I'm working with is just the length of my Akara fabric which is 45 inches which is fine for me so if you want a longer length then you are going to be folding the length on the other side because you can only get 45 inches by folding like this so 45 inches is fine for me so I'm just going to go ahead and start to shape this so I'm just going to fold the, the salvage area here I'm going to mark it out before I start my measurements so here I am measuring my 8 inches you can see and then what I have left here is going to be for my sleeve so the neck depth sorry the neck which I'm working with here is 3 inches you can let it be as wide as you want but I don't want this too wide so I'm just going to leave it at around 3 inches or three and quarter okay so this three and quarter is going to be my neck width and then for my shoulder slope here i'm going to come down by around two inches remember i've already taken half off from my salvage area so there i'm going to connect that to my neck point so if you are folding it in a way that you're not going to have a shoulder joining you don't need to do this shoulder slope that i'm doing here okay so after marking my shoulder slope, let me move to this side, you can see. So from there, I'm going to create my sleeve opening. So it's a very free sleeve, it's not tight. So you just measure it around that place and then you make sure you take that measurement loosely. So I have about 16 inches there, that's 8 inches on the fold. So I'll just mark around 10 inches with allowance or 9 inches. Okay. So this is going to be the opening of my sleeve. And on that opening point, I'm going to come in by around 2 inches. And then I'm going to take that all the way down. So I don't want it too sharp. You can see me just covering my hand. And then I'm going to mark the 2 inches to the hem. Okay. So now I'm going to shape the side so that we can continue. So this side is cut now. I can see what it looks like. So... I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the shoulder slope as well. Okay. So now the next thing is to shape the front. So the front has a collar. The front of the jacket has a collar, as you can see, and then the back is slitted. So the neckline that I'm working with, which is three and quarter inches, is what I'm going to use to open it up to the hem. So this is totally up to you and the style that you wish to go for. You can just make it open from here and then taper towards the hem, especially at the back. So what I'm going to do now is just to measure this three and quarter, and then I'm going to measure it all around. Okay. So I actually added this three and quarter to my fabric because. I want us to understand this well okay so if you don't want to waste too much fabric you can just subtract this measurement from your actual measurement since we are still going to chop it off I don't know if you understand what I'm saying 
okay so this is three and a half inches the neckline that i measured the neck width that i measured and that is what i'm going to be using for my opening in both front and back okay so i'm just marking this all the way to the hem and then i'm going to cut it off so now cutting it off this is what it looks like okay so now when we open it up we'll have one side for the front and then one for the back like this and then it will have this to have this opening so like i said i can just remove my front like this if you wish to shape your back anyhow you want maybe for me now i think i just want the hem of the back to be a little slanted okay it's totally up to you and then you can also control that with the bit, the strand of this that you are working with. But I'm just going to shape it just to show us that we can have whatever shape that we want. So here at the hem of the back, I'm just going to measure like one and a half inches inward more than what I have in front. Okay. I'm going inwards by one and a half inches or even two inches. And then I'm going to connect that to the midpoint of the back. So to know the midpoint, I'll just fold this into two like this. And then you can connect this to wherever it is that you want, actually. So now I'll just find a way to blend this in. Okay, so from here, I'm just connecting. Please, if you have a long ruler, use it. So I just want to use this to know how I'm supposed to connect it. So now it's going to be more open and then you can also shape it at the back so it's totally up to you the design you want you can just leave the back and then shape it like this just to be a little bit curved so it's totally up to the design that you want just opening it up a bit more than what i have in front so now the first thing i'm going to go and do now is to sew my shoulder together so i'll just open it out like this so you can see the effect so let me just bring it closer so that you can see the effect that this is giving it so it will just be a little wider so i will lay my front on it as well and then i'm going to join it together on the shoulder so this is the other side of the front so the shoulder is joined now as you can see i've joined the shoulder together i just labeled this front and back but because we we shaped the front you it will be obvious for you to just know the where your front and where your back is so now this is what i have so remember there's going to be a like a band passing through the front and then the collar at the back but the center back the main center back is going to be opened like this for us to pass her bit so you don't want this part to be frilling off like this so what you can do is surge it and then turn it over or you just turn it with your bias okay but for me i'm just going to be folding it tiny with the half an inch allowance that i have to sew the collar okay so this is the front and this is the back so i have half an inch to join the collar okay so that half an inch i'm just going to manage it and then fold it by a quarter of an inch first and then fold in another quarter and i'm going to use that to aim it for the back okay so you have the back empty like this and then the front is just going to you still have your half an inch for the front after you have hemmed your back so i'll go ahead and aim the back now and bring it back to show us what we have so i have gone to hem it and as you can see see what i have you can see that this side is neat now you can also use the bias for this i was actually struggling with the color of bias i'm going to use that's why i just said to aim it inwards like that and then this is the half an inch that i have for the front so this is the other side as well and then this is the half an inch i have for the other side so now the next thing i'm going to do now is to fix my band to connect them together you can see that they are separate now is the band that is going to connect them together so to fix the band you're going to measure 
around the front remember it goes all the way to the on, on the front side and then for the back it's just on the collar that will cut off on the neckline remember we have chopped off the neckline so the collar is just going to be on the neckline it's going to be replacing the neckline that will cut off at the back so now from the end of the front i'm going to take my tape now and measure all the way to the upper part and of course it's going to be 45 inches remember we use the entire length of our ankara to do this which was 45 inches so i have 45 inches for this side and then 45 inches for the other side as well so 45 inches plus 45 inches that's 90 inches and then for the back i remember i said it's going to be replacing the collar the neckline the neckline we use that's the neck which we use was three and a half inches for one side so now folding it into two to occupy the two neck remember the neck is half when we were drafting we drafted on a half scale bodies so for us to get the full neckline we're going to multiply the three quarter by two and that is around six and a half so that six and a half inches i'm going to add it to the 90 inches that I already measured for the front and that's going to give me 96 and a half so you can just cut around 97 or 98 inches then you can cut off the excess so i'll go ahead and cut a band of 98 inches long and then the width is going to be around five inches okay so by the time i fold it i'll have so and half inches and then when i fold it when i sew it with half an inch i'll have a width of two inches so now i have cut mine you can see how long it is this is 98 inches in length and then the width is about five inches okay so I just go ahead to fold in the half an inch that I'm going to use to sew it and then I iron this. So this is what I have. You can also attach, you can also fuse a with gum stay to this just to make it stronger. So this is what I have now and then I'm going to go ahead and then sew it. So there are several ways you can sew this. There are several professional ways you can even sew it. But I was asked to make this as simple and beginner friendly as possible. So I'm just going to make it really simple. So now I'm picking my front. You can I see the front? So I'm picking the front now. And then I'm going to insert it like this and pin. So you can see this is the front this is the edge of the front outwards this is where the band is going to pass through and i've already folded in the seam allowance so i'm just going to fold insert my band my front into the band by the half an inch seam allowance and then i'm going to pin and then sew on it so this is what i'm going to do all around so i'll pin it so after pinning it now when i get to the shoulder here okay it's just going to enter into the half an inch remember we have half an inch on the shoulder here so it's just going to enter into the half an inch on the shoulder just like this so you can see this is going to make it neat let me use the side that i've already sewn okay so you can see now so it's just going to as it's coming from the lower part it's just going to enter the half an inch like this so when you finish sewing the 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 shoulder what you need to do is to measure out the back neckline which was six and a half inches so now with my tape rule i'm going to measure how the six and a half inches okay so after measuring the six and a half inches it is from there that i will continue to sew to the other side so i'll have the six and a half inches color by the time we sew it i'm sure we'll get it so i'm on the machine now and you can see so this is my band i'm just going to open it up inside the the front the center front in between it like this and then i'm going to sew okay you can see how simple it is so after sewing that you open it up again you insert it like this and then you fold it then you sew so this is how i'm going to continue sewing it you can see how simple this is okay so now i'm at that point where you can see my back you can see the extension that i have for the front so now this extension now i'm just going to fold in the seam allowance for the shoulder like this so you must have heard said all of this place so that you have something in it and then i'm just going to input it inwards like this just like i have this okay so i'll make sure that it's supposed is where it's supposed to be and then i will sew so after sewing it now i'm going to measure my back collar now so my back collar is six and a half inches so from where from the shoulder here i measure six and a half inches and then i'm going to sew it close as well 
Okay. So after sewing it, I'm going to check again that I have the six and a half inches. Okay, so now you can see I just removed it so that I can explain this well. So now from where my shoulder stop, which is here. I'll measure the six and a half inches for my back neckline. I can see that I stopped sewing at exactly six and a half inches. I hope you can see that. So now I'm going to bring my other side. Remember, they are all single. It is this color that is going to join them together. And then at this point of the front of the other side, where I have this extension, this half inch extension for my front, I'm just going to insert it here like this and then i'll continue sewing i hope you understand that so now i'm going to place this under my machine and then continue to sew just like i have been sewing so i'm trying to straighten it and then i'll place it like this okay and then i'll sew So just like we have been sewing earlier, you just arrange it and then place it in between what you have here and then you sew. So you can see now we have our back collar. So this is going to be my back collar. Okay, so now I'm sewing to the hand and then I'll lock my stitch and then I'm going to cut off the excess that I have. Okay, so now we are done sewing it and as you can see, this is our um, collar for the front and then this is the six inches that we have for the back. So like I said, there are several ways you can fix this collar. You can just turn this back separately before you sew it or you can use a hemming glue to gum this part if you don't want to see your seam line there. But I just want this to be as easy as possible. So this is what we have so far. So now the last thing to do is just to join it on this side. So this, this jacket actually has a drawstring on the side to shape it to whatever uh, whatever design you want on the side so for us to be able to create channels for this drawstring you need to hem all of them independently before joining it so you can see i've gone to hem it so this is the front this is the back you can see that i hemmed all four separately two sides for the front and two sides for the back so after hemming it on the lower part there i've gone ahead to hem my sleeve my half my sleeve opening area as well so what i'm going to do now is just to flip this to the wrong side and then i'm going to go ahead to sew it with my seam allowance so i'll just sew like this before i create the channel for the drawstring okay so i have gone ahead to sew it on this side and you can see now that the side is closed so you can go ahead and iron it so to create the drawstring i'm just going to open it up to that same allowance that i have on this side you're going to iron it down then after ironing it down i'm going to fold in half an inch here like this and then i'll sew it down on both sides so to the point you're just going to sew it down to the point where you want your drawstring to stretch from so that was why i said it is important that you hem it first because if you don't hem it and if you create your channel and you now hem it it's going to block it you will not be able to pass your rope through it so i'll go ahead now and create these channels and then i'll make my rope as well so i have created this channel now as you can see and then you can see that the hand can pass through it so now what you need to do is to bring your ropes i have two ropes here so you just make it as long as you want it to be and then i'm just going to fix my safety pin and then i'll use that to pass my rope so now from this lower part you fix your rope and then you bring it to wherever you want it to be so for me from my hem i want it to stop around 17 inches upward so i have marked the 17 inches and then i'm just going to continue pushing my rope up to that point Okay, so now that I'm on that point, I'm going to bring out the rope like this and then I'll also pass the other one. So I'm just releasing it. Okay, so I can feel it. The rope is here. 
so i'm going to do the same thing to the other side fix my rope and then pass it up to this mark the second rope is passed as well and then when you get to that point i'm going to bring it out as well and then remove your safety pin so now i'm going to also drag this inwards a bit so that it can be on the same level so now i can feel it so now where the rope stop which is here you go ahead and lock it down so you are going to sew to hold it so that you can drag it anyhow you want i have already done that on this side so let me just show us you can see i have just locked my stitch here so now after locking your stitch you'll be able to just adjust it anyhow you want to form whatever design you want and then the rope can get to whatever length that you want as well it doesn't have to stop where mine stops it can even start from your from your armhole area that's where your sleeve stops so once you drag it like this you can tie it anyhow you want to form whatever style you want so you can see it just gives it another form of design so i'll go ahead and lock this as well so i have gone ahead to lock the stitch as well so the last thing to do now is to bead on the back so this is the back remember we have hemmed it as well so now i'm going to bring in my bead now and start passing the bead so that we can join the back together as well so it is a bead that is going to connect the two back panels together you can see that they are still separate so you are going to bead it as much as you want but i recommend that you just stop it a little below your waistline so now we're going to beat this okay so to beat it i'm going to be using this bead that i have it's a leftover bead from the previous project and i'm going to be working with this fishing line the size is 0.35 millimeter i prefer to use fishing line but you can also use a regular thread but i prefer fishing line because it doesn't cut easily i know we are working with beads so I pass this through my needle. I'm using this bead needle. The size is number 11. Okay. So I pass my fishing line through my needle, and then I'm going to go ahead and knot it. So it depends on how full you want your bead to be. It can be very full. It can be scanty. It's totally up to you and what you want to achieve. So now after knotting my tie, I'm going to start to bead this. So this is the back you can see so this and we've already hemmed the back you can see that it is clean as well this is the other side so i just pass my bead from here to the other side to connect them together so you can start placing the bead from anywhere but i want to come down by around two inches before i start beading it so here i have my two inches mark here and i'm going to pass my bead from you can pass it from anywhere it can be from up it can be from the bottom so because i'm working with fishing line and it's a bit ash i don't want to pass it from under okay you can burn the edge of your fishing line as well if you want so now i'm passing this now and then i'm going to make sure to knot a tie there to secure it before i pick my bit okay so once i see that it is secured and because fishing line is actually clear color Okay, it's it, the color is not going to show on whatever fabric you are working with so that's why i still prefer it is like using an invisible thread so now after knotting your tight there making sure it's tight you come in with your bead and then you pick as many as you need so if you don't want to work too much you can use a bigger size of bead that's going to fill up small spaces more space quickly for you so depending on the type of bead you're working with you just pick your bead and then you keep checking to see if it has reached what you want to work with so now i'm just picking so now i have picked my bead to some extent and then the first one is important because that's what i'm going to like use to control the length of my bead so remember my back neckline is actually six and a half that's three and quarter multiplied by two which is what we use to create that color so you can see what i have here now that i have my six and a half inches for my beads as well you can see i have exactly six and a half inches i have stopped it so now i'm going to measure the same two inches downwards that i measured from my shoulder and then i'm going to pass the needle and lock it there as well okay so 
here is my two inches i'm just going to pass my needle and then make sure to tighten it well okay so after that you can now decide to make your bead drop as you want it it can now be dropping it can be straight like this you can make it drop whatever style you want to do with this afterwards you can decide to do it so my fishing line is actually long as you can see so i'm not going to be cutting it off so now that i've tightened it to make the next strand instead of cutting my fishing line off i'm just going to be passing it inwards okay remember there is a hem here so now i'm going to pass my beads inwards in such a way that the fishing line is not going to show outside i hope we understand what i'm doing so now i'm passing the needle inside the hem that i have here so you can see i'm passing it inside the hem and then you bring it out wherever it is you want your next bit to start so i'm just eyeballing around one inch okay and once i have my one inch i'm going to bring out the needle from there and here i have it so i'll spread it out again so after bringing it out on that one inch i'm going to lock my stitch before i pass the next bit so this is basically how you're going to bid it till you have achieved your desired length of bead so now i will just stop this around 20 inches from my shoulder that's a little below my waistline so the total length of what i'm beading is going to be around 20 to 22 inches there about so this is actually up to you and the design you want to achieve so after locking this one the next thing now is to take your beads again and you start picking the bits for this desired size that you want i hope you understand this it's very simple so now that i've locked my stitch my stitch i'm going to pick my bits okay so you can see i have picked these bits as well actually and i have it where exactly the length that i want it to be so you can see that it is dropping a little compared to what we have here so the beauty of these beads actually is that you can use it to con to control the the space that you have in between there that's what you can do with your beads again so now i'm going to just go ahead and measure what i used for this side and like i said it's about one inch so that's what i'm going to do so i'll just measure the one inch on this other side as well and then from there i'm going to pass my bead so the spaces that you have in between is totally up to you it can be one inch like i'm using it can be half an inch it can be 0.75 it can be 0.25 if you want it really close that's going to be like quarter inch interval between each of your beads so it depends on the amount of bead you are willing to work with and the time that you have to actually beat this okay so now after locking this stitch i'll just go ahead and keep doing it to the length that i want so i'm just going to stop this video here now since it's just same process and then i'll see us when i finish beading the back okay so this is what our jacket is looking like now you can see the the color the strap that we sew all around this and then if you come to the sides now you will see the drawstring that we have here you can see now that it's shaping it you can see how the back now looks tapered like we cut it that way is the effect of this drawstring you can draw it as much as you want this is totally up to you and then now you come to the back which is the main tutorial you can see the level that my beat is getting so it's just a little below the the waistline so you can make it as much as you want and you can see the color that we have here at the back so this is what is controlling it that's why i said it's important for you to note the measurement that you used for your neck with so that that's going to guide you in placing your color when you're sewing it. so this is what the full view of the back looks like and this is our sleeve so your sleeve can be as long as you want mine was around eight inches length so that was why i left it at that i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i will see you in the next one bye